Money will not make you happier. The idea that money can't buy happiness is a load of beep. How much money do you need to maximize happiness? And the answer is more. After you've got your basic needs met, more money won't make you any happier. $25,000 per year to $50,000 per year, their happiness metrics might increase by 50%. That $1 million will not bring happiness. Money will make you happier. While money truly cannot buy happiness, it absolutely can buffer stress. What you know about money and happiness is wrong. But don't feel bad, pretty much everybody is wrong about it. But how can this be? What you're about to learn during this video will simply change your life. So watching the whole video is hands down one of the best investments in your future happiness you can make. Wow, that's a bold statement. I do hope this video is not a clickbait. Also, criticizing words of Andrew Huberman and Matt Davella? Peter Parker, I hope you deliver the goods. Otherwise, you'll be the most hated man on the internet. Oh yes, I got great respect for both Andrew Huberman and Matt Davella. Don't worry my friends, I always deliver on my promises. Have you ever wondered how much happier you'll be when you finally reach? No more worrying about never-ending bills to pay, no more stressing about taxes, and no more anxiety about being able to keep up with the Joneses. When you have all the money you need, when you are rich, when at last you have your Lambo or any other fancy car, when you no longer have to fly squashed with commoners as you've got your own private jet, when you've got your beautiful mansion down south with amazing pool and stunning views. And don't forget about your own yacht. What's the point of being rich without the yachts. All of this feels so much happier, doesn't it? So you are sure money will buy you all the freaking happiness in the world, right? The problem is, our intuitions can be very wrong sometimes. Remember when you first started dating that amazing person and you were sure that that person was the one? Well, that didn't turn out that well, did it? And now you call that person your ex. Let's be brutally honest, you can't trust your intuitions sometimes. Another example would be looking at the sunrise or sunset. When you do that, you can swear that this is the sun moving around the earth. This is what you clearly see and feel. The only reason why you know it's not true is Copernicus and science. Yes, science. That imperfect but still the most reliable and the least biased way of figuring out what's real and true in life. Okay then, let me be your money happiness Copernicus. Man, you're so modest. I know, right? Anyway, this has nothing to do with me, but everything to do with data. All right, let me take you on this fascinating journey of discovery. During the last 12 years, results from four excellent research studies came out, which contradicted all the statements from the intro. Let's start with a study by a Nobel Prize winner, Daniel Kahneman and Angus Deaton, with close to half a million of respondents. What they showed was that happiness rises with income until about $75,000, or 104,000 in today's money. After reaching this income, there were no more increases in happiness. Okay, so we know that these two statements Money will not make you happier. That one million dollar will not bring happiness. Are wrong. Money might bring you some happiness up to a point. This was corroborated by an excellent study by Jeb et al. in 2018 in Nature Human Behavior. So I guess Andrew Huberman could probably say, publishing excellent journals like Nature, they use 1.7 million representative sample of respondents from around the world. Very impressive. They confirmed existence of the Money Happiness Association. Satiation. 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 <laughs> anyway, they confirmed without any doubt that there is a point beyond which more income doesn't bring more happiness. And this was true for every single region around the world. Here are incomes needed for the maximum effect on happiness. In the Northern America, you just need $65,000 for maximum effects on positive emotions. Well, not so fast. This income is for a single person household only, and the data is somewhat dated. To know the amount you need right now, multiply this by 1.3 and then by a square root of your household size. So go ahead and do the math. <laughs> Just kidding, I'm not going to torture you. Here are the results. If you've got a large family in North America, looks like you need a lot of money. Maybe it's time to consider moving to Latin America, although you might want to watch the rest of the video first. Everything on the money happiness front seemed clear until a new study by Killingsworth came out two years ago. The study was not as impressive as previous ones. It had 33,000 respondents, so 50 times smaller sample than the previous nature study. But still, he used a 10 point scale for happiness measurement, real time experience sampling, and multiple data points per person that generated 1.7 million data observations. So that's pretty decent. This graph from the study was widely shared throughout the media. You could summarize it with words 
first from a famous prophet. Blessed are those who are rich, for they are the happiest. Or maybe it was some weirdo on YouTube. Anyway, the study showed that happiness rises with income, no plateaus, no upper limits. So this statement by Matt Davella, after you've got your basic needs met, more money won't make you any happy. is incorrect. Sorry, Matt. The basic needs are met well below 60K, while happiness income cessation was shown to be way higher in all our studies. So wait a second, does this mean that everyone else was right and money will buy happiness? This is where things get really interesting. When I first saw this graph, something felt off immediately. The results didn't match any other results. So I decided to recreate that graph using the original data from the study. This is the original graph. Now look at the graph I recreated using the original data from the study. These are two different lines. In the first graph, it's a straight line, meaning more income will always bring more happiness. In a second, there's a plateau, a cessation point, and the richest people are less happy than people making less money. Well, somebody else also noticed this problem and asked the study author about it. He replied that he removed all responses from analysis from people who didn't provide response to a question about life evaluation. I mean, <laughs> what? This has nothing to do with happiness responses. Scientists are reluctant to remove any part of data from their sample, as this can easily bias the results. And what happened here clearly affected change the results. So how many respondents were removed? 100? 500? 16,000. That's half of the whole sample. And the richest group went from 420 to only 190 respondents. This is insane. This is the graph that was used to summarize the results of the study. So this completely changed the interpretation of the results. The author mentioned under the graph that the data is only from people that answered both questions. But everyone reading this would assume that this was maybe few percent of the sample, not 50%. I think that most people will see this as a gross misrepresentation of results. And I think that the study should be retracted until it is corrected. All right, now when you look at these graphs representing all people from the sample, you can tell that the money-happiness relationship is roughly the same as in previous studies. Money can improve happiness only up to a point, and having more won't help. Let me help you see this even better. This income line is on logarithmic scale, which biases perception of most people outside of academia. Here's the same graph, but on a standard linear scale instead. Now we can clearly see that every new dollar generates less and less happiness. And at some point, more money doesn't bring any more happiness. So we can debunk another statement here. How much money do you need to maximize happiness? And the answer is more. Additionally, if your income is already at or past the cessation point, more money won't make you any happier. Money will make you happier. You think I'm done here? <laughs> Oh no, my friends, the best parts are yet to come. People love that original graph because it showed a steep line, indicating a strong relationship between income and happiness. If there was no relationship, you would see a flat line close to the bottom. Let's do some magic. Look at y-axis with happiness. What does it say? Z-scored well-being. Now, I'm not going to go deep into statistics because I'm sure I will lose 90% of people watching. What you need to know is that this graph is drastically zoomed. This is what the relationship between money and happiness looks like when you want to see the whole distribution of happiness in the sample. What happened? Where is the steep line and money-happiness relationship? This looks like a flat line, and you know what that means. Now, let's play a little game. This is the 10 points well-being or happiness scale that was used in the study. Where would you place yourself right now on this scale? Choose a point, remember the position, say the number out loud, and write it down. All right, now where are you going to be on this scale when you make twice as much money as you make right now? Pick a number, say it out loud, and write it down. Finally, how much happier are you going to be when you are at last filthy, real each. Choose a point, say the number out loud and write it down. And now the time for the grand reveal. Let's see how much happiness can money really buy you. This is how happy on average are people making $25,000, $65,000, $112,000 and $250,000. And finally, this is where truly rich people are. What the hell? Are you kidding me? I am speechless. Well, my friends, this is the shocking reality. I was stunned when I uncovered this data as well. Rich people are nowhere near happy, which is above 8 out of 10 on this scale. All right then, let's cross off two more wrong statements. The idea that money can't buy happiness is a load of beep. $25,000 per year to $50,000 per year, their happiness metrics might increase by 50%. But wait, let's be fair, there still seems to be some effect of money on happiness. Does this mean that a guy making a million a year is happier than a guy making 25k? This is another thing that people often get wrong. These are averages only, and people fall above and below each group mean. Let's play another game. Let's say we have 100 people earning $25,000. How many of these 100 people are happier than the average rich person? I've run the stats, so I can give you a precise answer. Okay, so how many? I'd say 1%. 
But wait, you're going to surprise me. So four out of 100, it is 40. Imagine 40%, which is close to half of that group, where people are making $25,000, are happier than the average person in our richest group with millionaires. What? Wow, that's just mind blowing. <laughs> Now let me show you the truth about money. This is the only graph that you need to see to understand the money and happiness relationship. And it was based on 1.7 million data points from the last study. This is what most people think the money happiness relationship looks like. And this is the truth about money and happiness relationship. Are you kidding me? Man, this graph alone was worth my time invested in this video. It is a flat line after all. Tell me then, just what percentage of happiness is explained by money? You've probably figured that out, right? Of course I have. Do you remember that statement from the intro? This relationship accounted for about 37% of the expected variance, which is huge. This percentage was taken from our first study, and that person completely misunderstood this sentence, which is not about money and happiness, but about cleaning up data, removing outliers. Okay, so what's the true number? 20%, 15%, 10%? Well, if you use the data in a paper, it is 0.8%, so less than 1%, but it is even worse than that. Once the mismatch between data and the census data was accounted for, this percentage dropped to 0.49%. So half of 1% of happiness can be explained by money. Holy <laughs> It seems like I don't have to worry about not making six digits yet. Yes, and we're not even done here. You see, there's one fundamental problem that nobody seems to notice. People see data indicating that higher income people are slightly happier, so they think that money made them happier. But correlation is not causation. Have you ever entertained a possibility that this causation runs in other direction? That is, that people make more money because they are happier. Damn! Please tell me you've got some data to back this up. Of course, my friends. I'm Peter Parker. Here is a fascinating longitudinal study. Teenagers were assessed for their positive affect, and 10 years later, happier individuals earned 40% more money than those that were less happy. And remember, 40% difference after a decade could grow to much bigger differences after 20 or 30 years. What is interesting is that the strength of this relationship was of the same magnitude here as in the previous study. Now, I am not saying that all money-happiness relationship is explained by earlier happiness levels. This is likely by bi-directional influence. However, the mere existence of that influence indicates that the money's ability to raise happiness, which was tiny already, is really trivial. Wow, it seems like everyone was wrong after all. The last study on my list, the GRAND study, or the study of adult development at Harvard Medical School, confirmed this. This is a fascinating 80 years old running longitudinal study, tracking people with all their metrics across their lifespan. What they found that there was no correlation between money and happiness. It could be that the effect was so small that the smaller study sample could not pick that up, or that there is no relationship when you look at it across people's lifespan, or when you control for prior happiness levels. Fascinating, but also confusing. How can this be? Surely, if I got money, I can spend it on something that raises happiness. This is a common misconception. And even people like Andrew Huberman fall for this. While money truly cannot buy happiness, it absolutely can buffer stress. Here's data from the first study with almost half a million people by Nobel Prize winner Daniel Kahneman. For the majority of people in the US, households with income of at least $40,000, higher income doesn't reduce stress. Killingsworth study showed the same thing. Above certain income, money doesn't reduce stress. Let's be clear here. Receiving money or spending it may make you happier. However, due to hedonic adaptation, this effect is transient, very short lasting. Moreover, what almost everyone gets wrong is the assumption that money comes with positive effects on but money comes with a number of negative effects as well. For most people, increase in income comes with more responsibility, therefore more stress, or working longer hours, therefore missing out on other happiness generating activities. Other problems include increase in materialistic values, lifestyle inflation, and increased social comparisons. Money also impairs people's ability to savor everyday positive emotions and experiences. So your ability to enjoy simple pleasures of life is reduced. And finally, money could could undermine the biggest source of happiness, relationships with other people. It's been shown in experiments that people primed with money prefer to play alone, work alone, and put more physical distance between themselves and the new acquaintance. And if you prefer real life examples instead of abstract ones, here's one. When I chatted to one billionaire, after a few drinks, he admitted that he couldn't have a partner in his life that he could trust because he knew that nobody cared about him, only about his money. <laughs>
And if you don't believe my anecdotal story, here is Marcus Person, who said that becoming a billionaire made him more isolated than ever. And being alone has a massive negative impact on happiness, seven times stronger than any positive effects of higher income. Here is a Harvard Longitudinal Study Director. It's not the number of people you surround yourself with, or if you are in a relationship. It's the quality of that relationships that matter. That is many times more powerful on your happiness than money. As another director of that study put it, happiness is love. Full stop. And the last sentence Christopher McCandless has written before he died in his search for happiness in Alaska was happiness is only real when shared. And finally, here's one last fascinating finding, the cherry on the top. What Killingsworth study has showed was that the belief that you need to be rich to be successful in life is horrible for your happiness. Not only for people who are not rich, but even for those making a lot of money. For all income groups, people that equate money with success in life are less happy. So simply, don't be that person. Wow, you definitely gave me a lot to think about. Yeah, you don't want to climb a ladder for 30 years only to realize that you was a wrong ladder all that time. In summary, I don't want you to think that money is completely irrelevant. It is not. And if you spend it well, for example on experiences or on other people, it can somewhat increase your happiness. However, if you really want to significantly increase your well-being, look in other places. Since your happiness is generated by neurochemicals in your brain, optimizing your physiology and health is a great place to start, as it will improve your capacity for happiness and amplify effects of your happiness generating experiences. So for example, things like regular exercise can get you natural highs and can raise your resting level of dopamine. Outside of that, focus on these critical areas quality relationships, meaningful work, and personal growth. So in summary, you need healthy body and mind, someone to love, something to do, and something to look forward to. All right, there was a lot of material to cover, but I hope you enjoyed it. I've made a short summary of all findings about money and happiness in a separate video, so you might want to check it out as well. And if you'd like to see more content like this, hit the like button right now. This is the best way to support this channel. See you in another one of my videos.